communicating. In this module, you will discover how sound behaves in the water, learn how to communicate during a dive, learn more about the buddy system, and look at some useful diving instruments and accessories. Sound in the water. Unless you examine physical phenomena more closely, you may take certain facts for granted. For example, we are used to communicating with our voices and we presume that this is always possible. But in outer space or underwater, we cannot make even our loudest shout heard. Why does this happen? Sound is actually a wave of pressure that is transmitted from one molecule to the next. In the absolute vacuum of space, where there are no molecules, sound cannot be transmitted. It is a silent world. The atmosphere of our planet, however, contains gas molecules, even though these molecules are not very close together. Each molecule has to move closer to the other in order to increase the pressure and transmit the sound wave. Not only are the molecules in water much closer together, but there are also many more of them, so the total number of molecules that has to be moved is much greater. Because of this difference, sound in water travels faster than in air, but in order to be heard, it has to be much louder than the sound we can make with our vocal cords. There is also another effect. Sound waves travel about four times faster in water than they do in air. Our brains can determine the direction a noise comes from by calculating the delay between the sound wave reaching first one ear and then the other. In water, this delay is reduced to the point that the sound, for example a boat engine, seems to come from in front of us, whichever direction we are facing. Communication systems As we cannot speak underwater, divers have been forced to invent different ways of communicating. Commercial divers use expensive electronic communication systems. A more economical way is to write a message on an underwater dive slate, but this method is too slow in an emergency. This is why divers usually use hand signals to communicate. These signals must be simple and unmistakable so that they can be understood immediately. These signals are practically the same all over the world, which means that divers from different countries can communicate simple concepts. As divers, you must learn to use these hand signals, but in order to ensure efficient communication, you must use them in the correct way. Before signalling, you must be sure that you have the attention of the person you want to communicate with. It must be easy to see the signal, so it is best to make the signal to the side of your body. Finally, you must make sure that your body has understood the signal. The best way to do this is for the signal to be repeated in response. Now, let's take a look at some of the main hand signals used by divers. OK. Something is wrong. Up. Let's go up. Down. Let's go down. Equalize. I have little air. Out of air. Let's share air. Get close. Look. Boat. How much air do you have? The pressure is halfway. I'm on reserve. There are also other signals that are made on the surface to the boat or to other divers far away. OK. 
Okay, with one hand. I need assistance. I need the boat to pick me up. Your instructor will also teach you other signals as well as giving you some additional information about sound and light signals. Individual signals can be put together to make more complex phrases. See if you can understand these dialogues between divers. The buddy system. As we saw in the previous module, many of the alternative air sources that we would use in an emergency depend on having another diver nearby. In order to dive safely, you must always dive with a buddy and follow the buddy diving procedures. Your buddy's help means certain aspects of the dive, such as donning the equipment, can be less strenuous. An important safety procedure is the buddy check. This essential check not only ensures that all the equipment is assembled correctly, but it also makes the buddies familiar with each other's equipment, which may prove very useful in an emergency. If you get used to using the buddy system during your training, it will become a natural part of all your dives. Above all, remember that you must always stay within arm's length of your buddy and never lose sight of him. If you do happen to lose sight of your buddy, look around for one minute. Ascend a little so you can see his bubbles more easily. If you can't find your buddy, ascend to the surface where you will meet up with your buddy again. The buddy system makes diving safe, easier and more fun. Gauges In the previous module, you learned how to calculate your air consumption and estimate how long the air in your cylinder would last. To do this, you need instruments that can measure the data that are used to make the calculations. The first data that you need is the measurement of pressure in the cylinder, or how much air you have left. As you have already seen, we use a pressure gauge to supply us with this information. Another piece of information that we need to know, for example, in order to calculate our surface air consumption rate, is the depth. To measure depth, we use a depth gauge, which is a special instrument that actually measures the ambient pressure. In its simplest form, the depth gauge consists of a black needle that rotates and gives a depth reading. A red needle, which is pushed forward by the first, memorizes the maximum depth reached, another essential piece of information the diver needs to know, as we will see in Module 9. Just as important is knowing how long you have spent under the water. This can be done using a watch or a timer. To measure elapsed time safely, a watch should have a bezel that only rotates in an anti-clockwise direction. Your instructor will show you how to use this important instrument. Today there are also electronic timers which have numerous functions. The most sophisticated electronic underwater instrument is undoubtedly the dive computer which you will learn more about in Module 9. A dive computer's many functions include a depth gauge and a timer. This is yet another advantage of computers and one of the reasons why they have become so popular. 
There are even dive computers with integrated pressure gauges. This means that divers can use just one instrument to provide them with all the information they need for a safe and comfortable dive. The air pressure in the cylinder, actual depth, maximum depth reached, elapsed time, as well as other important information which we shall deal with in more detail later. Accessories There are also other items of equipment objects that make dives safer and more enjoyable. Some of the items that divers often refer to as accessories are in reality essential components of our diving equipment. The range of accessories is vast and your instructor will choose some of the items that will be most useful to you. Now let's take a look at some of the more important ones. A delayed surface marker bag is a long, narrow, sausage-like tube that is inflated with the air from your regulator under the water so that it rises to the surface and signals your position even before you surface. It is important that it has long enough line attached. There are also devices that make a noise which are useful for getting your buddy's attention such as a shaker or, more simply, a metal object that can be used to strike against the cylinder. And while we are on the subject of sound devices, it is obligatory to have some device that can be used on the surface to get the boat's attention more efficiently than just shouting. Even a simple whistle, particularly if it is used while waving a surface marker bag, is an excellent way of getting attention. <coughs> to cut fishing net or lines underwater, you need a small cutting tool, knife or line cutter, that should be worn in a position where it can be easily reached with both hands, for example in the area of the stomach. Writing on an underwater dive slate means that you can communicate more complex concepts. To avoid missing a dive due to breakages, a spares kit is a useful item to keep in your dive bag. The kit should have all the essential spares that you might need, such as O-rings and spare mask and fin straps. In many countries, it is obligatory for divers to indicate their position on the surface by using a flag with a red background and a white stripe that must be flown from the cover boat or clearly displayed on a surface marker buoy. In many countries, the regulations state that divers must stay within a determinate distance from the flag. Finally, as for any activity that is carried out in the open, there is a risk of injury. Every diver should carry a small first aid kit in his dive bag which is another useful item for putting all your equipment in. In the next module, you will learn about the partial pressure of a gas and why it is important for divers. Examine the effects that the gases we breathe have on our organism. Look at the problems related to the purity of the air in our diving cylinders and also see how gases are dissolved in liquids and why this phenomenon limits the time we can spend underwater. Until the next time.